Hi, in this video we are going to look at how to extrude shapes in Onshape. So that means to uh, take a 2D sketch and uh, pull that 2D drawing out to create a 3D model. All right, so uh, we're going to start by looking at how to create sketches uh, on the different planes and then we'll take those sketches and turn them into uh, 3D objects. So to start off with, um, what we need to do is click on sketch to create a new sketch. And then what we need to do is select the plane that we want to draw our 2D sketch on. So we could click uh, on the top plane here or the front plane or the right plane to choose from uh, any of those three default um, planes. I'm going to start by clicking on the top plane. So I'm going to draw on the top plane. And once I've done that, it then creates a new sketch. So we can see over here in the list of features, we have sketch one, which we could rename if we wanted to. Uh, and we also have, uh, we can see uh, an outline here of sketch one and it says sketch one there. And it's on the top plane, it's, it's laying flat. Okay, all right, so now what we need to do is choose what kind of uh, shape we're going to sketch. So there's different options here. We could uh, we could draw a line or we'll use a line tool to, to draw out some lines and join them together to create a shape. We could create a rectangle uh, or we could create an ellipse or uh, a circle. Uh, so there's a few different options here to choose from and there's some other tools here that we can use as well. In this video, we're going to look at how to create a shape using a line tool. Uh, rectangle and circle uh, or ellipse. Okay, so uh, to start off with, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. So I'll click the rectangle tool and I can choose from either corner rectangle where you draw a rectangle out from uh, the corners or center point rectangle where the rectangle is drawn out from the center. I'll show both. So I'll click corner rectangle to start off with. And because I've selected the top plane, I can click and drag to start drawing out a rectangle on the top plane. So I can just click and I can start dragging my mouse to um, stretch out the rectangle and create the shape that I like. Now it does show the uh, dimensions for both uh, the left, uh, the, the uh, length and the, the width of the rectangle, uh, but I can also type in measurements. So what I'll do is I'll let go and now I have a rectangle. Uh, I can see the top measurement here has a box around it. So it's 224 at the moment. What I'm going to do is just change it to 200. So I'll type in 200 and hit enter or return. Now this box over here, uh, this measurement is now, it's now got a, a box around it. So I can type in, it's 108. So I might change that to maybe 100 and hit enter or return again. And now I've got a rectangle that's 200 by 100 there. All right, so you can just click and drag to create a shape, but you can um, put in the measurements that you want by typing them in the, in the, the order. All right, uh, once you're done, you just click the green tick, and there we go, we have a, a rectangle that's been drawn out on the uh, top plane. Uh, a couple of things I'd just like to point out, one thing which I should have pointed out at the start is it's a good idea, it's sort of really important actually to set what type of dimensions you're going to use for your drawing. So up here on the document menu, uh, you can go to workspace units and uh, I'm already using millimeters. Uh, and for this tutorial series, I'm just going to recommend that you use uh, millimeters for if you're creating small parts, um, but there are other dimensions you can use here as well. So if you're maybe doing some architectural drawings, uh, uh, or much larger scale drawings and you might use meters or centimeters um, or you might use inches, feet, yards, whatever. But uh, for creating small parts to start off with, we'll just use millimeters and then click that green tick. So do that before you actually start drawing anything. Make sure you've uh, selected your workspace units up there before you begin your drawing. Another thing I'll mention is that we can change the view that we're drawing in. So I can see my rectangle here on this, uh, from this 3D perspective, but if I wanted to view it from the plane that I'm drawing on, front on, I can hit the N key on the keyboard and it shows me that drawing front on, uh, looking uh, straight at that drawing. I can also use the view cube up here as well to, I could have clicked on top as well. Uh, 
but you can hit the N key on the keyboard as a shortcut. Okay, so we've just drawn uh, a rectangle uh, and I've actually, I'll just uh, delete that now. Uh, click on that and then go delete. Just to show you, I'll create another sketch again. So create a sketch, I'm gonna click on the top plane. Uh, what I did was created a corner rectangle. You can also create a center point rectangle. So center point rectangle, if I was to click somewhere like the origin here, I can uh, draw it out from the center rather than from one of the corners. All right, uh, and then I could type in the measurements if I want, and uh, once I'm happy, I can click that green tick. Okay, now to turn this 2D sketch into a 3D model, all I need to do is click on extrude. So extrude, what that does is it takes a 2D sketch, pulls it out or stretches it out to, to turn it into a 3D model. So I'll click extrude, and um, I've already selected that sketch, so um, you need to make sure that a, a sketch is selected to extrude it. Um, so it's showing here face of sketch one. Uh, if I hadn't already selected it, then I would need to click on that sketch, that face there um, to choose that. Then what you can do is you can click and drag this arrow to pull it up. So if I wanted to create a box, I could pull it up. And you can see here that the um, depth is changing as well. All right, so if I drag that down, the depth changes. I can type in uh, numbers here that I want, so I could make it 50 millimeters, uh, or I can drag up or down by hand. You can also drag down, all right, or you can drag up. And you can, uh, if you were typing the numbers here and you wanted it to be 70 millimeters, but you wanted to, it to go down, you can just click this here to go in the opposite direction. All right, so, you can either uh, sort of uh, pull the shape up or type, uh, pull the shape up or down or type in the measurements and then uh, change the direction there. Once you're happy, click the green tick and you're done. Uh, you can also click on one of the sides here once you've got uh, a shape and you can click on extrude again. And then what you can do is add to the extru extrusion that already exists. So I could extrude it further, all right? Uh, or I could click on remove to remove what I've already uh, drawn. Or you could click on intersect as well so that you can just keep a portion of what you've extruded. All right, so you can either add to an extrusion, remove part of the extrusion or intersect. All right, and uh, you can do that for any of the sides. I could, uh, maybe I want to uh, stretch the rank tangle out a little bit to the right. So I might click that side there extrude and pull it out to make it uh, a bit wider. All right, so that's basic extrusion. And we can see we've got three extrusions here, the original one, and then I um, reduced it or um, subtracted a little bit, and then I also stretched it out to the right. I'm going to delete all of those, so I'll just hold down Shift to select them all, right click and delete. Uh, notice that I've still got the original sketch here, so I've removed the extrusion features, but I've still got the sketch. I'm gonna delete that sketch too. Uh, oops. All right, let's click on it and delete. <laughs> All right, it's gone. Uh, just to show some of the other sketches that we can create. So I can click sketch again, select the plane. I'll go with the top plane again. Uh, and this time I'll create a circle and similar to the rectangle, um, there's different methods that we can use. So we could create a center point circle. So I can click and drag there from the origin and I could uh, either click and drag or I can start typing in once I've clicked and dragged it out. Start typing in a number for the diameter and hit enter or return and then tick to make it finish that. And I could extrude just like I extruded uh, the rectangle. All right, or I'll just undo that. So Command Z or Control Z. Or I can, with my sketch on whatever plane I'm drawing, I could change that to a three point circle so I just click once, drag it out, click again, drag out. So now I've got two points and then click and, and release. Or the other option is uh, an ellipse as well. So I can click and drag and then click and drag again to stretch that out. And then I can also, once I've done that, I can refine it by typing in numbers and changing it. So I might make this uh, 120, hit enter then type in for this other part, say 160, hit enter, 
and now that's my ellipse. Okay, I'll just delete that one. Uh, and the last type of sketch I'm going to show for this video is using the line tool. All right, so I'll click on the line tool and I can just click at different points to create a shape using the line tool. And if you click and join to make, sh click and make sure that all of the points join together, so the starting point and the ending point, those lines join up and meet together and there's no gaps, uh, the shape will be highlighted in blue and that will indicate that it's a closed shape. So all of these lines join up together without any gaps. Once you've done that, uh, and again, you can type in measurements for the length of lines. Once you've done that, you can click on the green tick and you can uh, select this shape and you can click on extrude and you can exclude, extrude it just like you would have extruded any of the other types of shapes that you've created. So that's how to extrude using uh, the line tool. All right, so uh, that's it for this video. That's uh, how to extrude different shapes in Onshape. Uh, in the next video, we're going to look at how to sweep. Uh, and then we'll be moving on to loft and um, using some of the other tools. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.